Alrighty, so I did a live stream and it seemed like it was going okay, but for some reason the video kept getting flipped, so I figured I'd just record it on my phone and upload it, so I'll go through this real quick because I already did it on the live stream, but anyway, so I bought this little frequency counter. If I can remember, I'll put the name of it in the description and, and maybe a link. It wouldn't be an affiliate link or anything, just a regular link. So, um, so yeah, I bought this on Amazon. And then I bought some PCBs from uh, PCB Way. I'm not affiliated with them. I just went on and looked at shared projects. And I found this one, and I figured I need one, or I should have one, so... So I ordered five boards and I built one and it was kind of okay. I kind of had some success with it, but I had a few problems. So I'll tell you what the problems are if you haven't seen the live stream. So <clears throat> this is the original version of, of this project uh, according to the uh, website that I downloaded the the schematic and all the other stuff from. I did this on a breadboard to begin with and it worked perfectly fine on the breadboard but then when I built the the project on the boards from PCB Way, then I had some issues but I don't think it's got anything to do with the board that I, the boards I got from PCB Way. so uh, anyway so here's a here's what I have on here so there's a a small OLED screen, uh, Arduino Nano, and then an SI 5351 uh, clock module. So that has three outputs, but I'm only using one. And I have a push button on here. I don't need it for uh, this original version, but uh, on the more advanced uh, second version, they have a lot more features, so the push button is useful, but like I said on here, there's only one feature, and that's a frequency generator. So uh, basically you do everything with this rotary encoder. So if I push the rotary encoder, you'll see this uh, TS. I'm not sure what TS stands for. I'm no electronics expert so I have no clue but anyway you can change the the steps from uh, one kilo I think it's one kilohertz to uh, one megahertz so uh, one Hertz to one megahertz so if I go uh, 10 kilohertz uh, this thing won't start reading until a hundred kilohertz so it's not reading anything right now, but if I get up to one, one, 100 kilohertz, then you can see it. Well, hopefully you can see that. It starts reading, so now I'm going to switch to one megahertz, <clears throat> and we'll go up by one megahertz. So now we're on 10 megahertz. Hopefully you can see that. It doesn't look like it shows up very good on the, on the phone, so... Anyway, so we're at 10, 10 megahertz, well, 10.1 megahertz, and we're over by 90, what is it, 96 hertz, I think. So if I go up to 20, now we're over by 191, and if, I haven't calibrated this yet, so so I can get it a lot closer when I calibrate it, but right now this is good enough to, to show you guys on the video. So we're at 25.1, let me just go down, uh, go down so that it's an even number, so we're at 25 megahertz, so we're 237 hertz over. Uh, so that's probably not good, but like I said, I haven't calibrated it yet. And let's go up to 50, and 
and you'll see some funny business here. So this, I'm not sure which one it is, but I'm guessing this doesn't like 50 megahertz, and it just flashes like that. It still reads it fine, but it flashes and goes a little goofy, so let's go up to 75. So we're at 75 point, you know, 7, what is that, 704, I think. So we're off by 700 and something hertz. So let's go to 100. So we're at 100. And we're off by basically 1 kilohertz. 900 and something uh, hertz so yeah I, get, I have to calibrate it but anyway I just wanted to show you guys this project I can't remember the name of the module for the frequency counter but uh, like I said if I can remember I'll put it in the description but don't count on it because I'll probably forget but uh, anyway so the module here I think I already mentioned it, but that's an SI5351, and uh, if I can remember, I'll put a link to the project on uh, PCBWay, but uh, probably forget that too. So I have a Arduino Nano. You can use, if you're not going to buy the boards, you can use any, uh, I don't know about any Arduino, but you can use a Nano. I think a Pro Micro and uh, an Arduino Uno. An Uno is what I started out with when I had this on a breadboard, but uh, I bought a three pack of these uh, Nanos off of uh, Amazon. So I guess you could use any screen, but you'd have to modify the code. So I just bought the screen that they, they recommend so I didn't have to do that. But uh, anyway, that's about it. That's all I wanted to show you. Just a cool little project I've been working on. And I didn't have any, any kind of uh, frequency counter or frequency generator that would do higher frequencies. So I figured I may as well buy this. This thing cost me probably about $30 to make. And this was if I remember right around twenty dollars so not too bad fairly cheap so anyway I'm gonna go and I'll talk to you guys later have a good one bye